Hey Adam, you know I realized something you've never done here at the cave, at least for the camera. Well, or for Tested, and it's something that you have done a huge amount of on Tested, but I've never joined in. And that's building Lego. That is building with Lego. Um, and what I've got here is roughly 1,350 Lego pieces, and it's not a standard kit, it's a custom kit. Ooh, a my own creation. Now you saw this set online, uh, someone posted it, and you couldn't help but try to track it down and find it, yeah. and that's gonna be today's one day build. It is, and uh, this is really cool. This is a guy named Jason Alman who, uh, he writes on his blog that he came across a Disney research uh, video called Computational Design of Mechanical Characters. And it was how to get human type movement out of mechanical linkages. And he was so inspired by the paper that he went and he designed this. It's an automata. It's an automata of Sisyphus pushing a rock up a hill. And the video, it went around the web a few months ago, a whole bunch, and it deservedly went viral because it is beautiful in its movement and its motion. And I contacted Jason um, and I he put together this kit for me. I mean, I, I paid him for the Legos, I paid him for the time. Um, but uh, I'm, he knew that I was totally interested in doing this and he sent me these directions and we're gonna build it today. That's awesome. Now the instructions and the entire list of the bricks are actually on his website. Yeah. You can click the link below if you for some chance have all the pieces and want to build along, but we're going to hopefully do this in a day. We are going to do this in a day, and hopefully he includes both the instructions for the entire construction, because Sisyphus is on a, a plinth or uh, some type of platform that has reliefs of his life on the side. That's in mini fig scale. Yeah, um, but he also includes instructions for just building the mechanical core. So mm. if you've got a bunch of Technic Legos, um, you can just build the mechanical arrangement and do your own dressing of it, which I think is pretty awesome. I can't wait to see how the animation looks in person. Uh, there's a lot of pieces. I think our first step, we got a knoll. We have to know, and I appreciate your guidance in this because frankly, I haven't built a Lego kit. I think I bought a Pegasus kit on Etsy a mm -hmm. few months ago, a few couple of years ago and put it together in my house in a couple of hours. Um, but I haven't built an extensive large Lego kit in years, maybe more than a decade. So 1,300 pieces, which is definitely a sizable set, and uh, this is gonna be a collaboration. Yep. We're gonna start knolling first, and then we're gonna get to assembly. So let's break open the bags okay. and get to knolling. No! As we begin to knoll, well, let's explain what knolling is, because we've used the phrase a lot, pretty casually. We have, and I've been knolling for years without knowing that it had a name. Uh, knolling has its origins from a janitor named Andrew Cromolo, who was a janitor for Frank Geary, when the architect, when he was working for designing for Knoll, uh, the famous mid-century designer of Florence Knoll. Uh, and at the end of each day, Andrew would place things on the table at right angles to each other in nice arrangements so that when he was done, the user could see all of the objects set out in front of them at once. And he called this process knolling. And it's something you apply to building model kits, even yeah. when you go and uh, unpack your bags at a hotel room, Absolutely. everything on your desk. It is a, it's a meditative process. It's how I do dishes. It's how I clean my kitchen. It's, uh, it's, it's a thing I find incredibly relaxing. In fact, my practice when I'm traveling is I land, I arrive in my hotel room, I dump my bag upside down on the hotel bed, and then I put in headphones and call my wife, and we chat for a couple of hours, but while we're chatting, I am slowly putting everything in its place, and it's just, it's so relaxing. Now the knolling process, as it applies to Lego, is a little different, because it actually, it, it adds an efficiency to yes. how you can build. And the tricky part, I'll tell you, about knolling with Lego is gonna be surface area, because you're gonna wanna, your, your in instinct is to lay everything out and to have everything look pretty, right. there's gonna be a functional aspect. And I think we're gonna soon run out of table space. So um, my strategy actually is to group things by the piece type, uh -huh. by their sizes, by the different colors, and I'm gonna have a, a copy of the instructions out as well so I can start feeding you step by step awesome. the pieces that go into each step. Oh, I love that, that's great. Let's okay, do that. Okay, cool. Let's get started. Okay, here we go. Dooling.
All right, Norm. This is very deeply satisfying. I could spend another hour just lining just everything perfecting up. perfecting everything. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're gonna have to take it all apart or actually put it together. That's fine. Because it's gonna go into a sculpture. But we're ready, right? I think we're ready. Okay, uh, so you're gonna help me on this. This is, I've never had the luxury of someone helping. This actually makes it so much better. Right. And, and this is actually a really fun job too. Like if you're working and building a large Lego kit with someone, there's yeah. gonna be someone who wants to put the pieces together, yeah. and there's gonna be someone who loves like this, the knolling part. I feel like you would have fun either way. Oh, I would be, I'd be happy being either, yeah, the yes. piece supplier or the putter together or. or, or. So you're gonna be the assembler and yep. I'm gonna be the piece supplier. We're gonna have a shared language for Lego. Like we'll know when you need a two by four red, thick brick, when you need a, you know, a two by eight thin, I'll, uh -huh. I'll know. But more importantly, we'll both have the instructions. So Thanks. I have a copy of the instructions. It's 188 pages. You have a copy. And I'm just gonna, I think, take like, for example, step one, yeah. all the pieces and put them in one spot and give you the steps and you're right. follow along. Hopefully we'll be in sync. This is, I just realized that I'm, a, uh, I'm going to be a 3D printer. <laughs> human 3D printer. I have one thing to give you that may help with this process. Awesome. Perfect. Step yeah, one, step look at two, that. Step two, step three, three, four, boom. Okay, let's do it. All right, five pages into the instructions, we've already run to our first roadblock. We're missing a piece. Now, if this was a Lego, official Lego set, my rule would be Lego never makes mistakes or very rarely makes mistakes. But this is assembled by just a builder, uh, Jason. So it's very possible that he omitted what looks to be a thicker version of this two by two L-shaped block. Now Adam fortunately has some reserve Lego and it doesn't look like it's a mechanically crucial piece so we're just gonna fill it in yep. and continue. Norm, you want to explain what just happened? Well, <laughs> it turns out that the rule still applies to Jason sets because the mistake was ours all along. Well, so Norm thought that we'd lost an entire bag because there was a step that called for another couple of these and we were like, oh shit. If Which we is a good sign. A yeah. Yes, we knew that we must have made the mistake somehow. And then you and I both stared at this for minutes. <sighs> like idiots. And it turns out it was just yep. at a different orientation. But there you go, a stack of the L's. So I've put it back into circulation. It's now gone where my fix was. We are all Back to normal. Back to building. Back to building. Oh, Norm. Oh, Ooh. look at that. Wow, so that's one side of the base. That's one the side of, yeah. And so that gives you already a sense of the scale the whole thing's gonna be. Because you're gonna have this base and then there's gonna be a, a guy on top of it. I might actually even make a wooden base that it sits upon just so that it's got a little more substance and I can Whoa. move it around without worrying about it. Awesome. Isn't it beautiful? Already, yeah. He's a wonderful builder. I like that he's done the fluted columns. Already I catch, you know, the vignette that's about to mm -hmm. happen here, the bas relief, all in gray. Um, it's lovely, you get a glimpse into the designer's mind when you're putting this together. It's great. All right. All right, Adam. Sir. I think we're at an interesting point in the build because you have some Lego Technic in there. There's gears. There's gears. There's gears, and I think we've got a gear train. I think I'm ready to test fire it. You ready? Yeah. Dude. 
Wow. Yeah, man. These are these are Sisyphus's feet right here. Mm-hmm. I think, yeah. But these will be the bases of his feet. So the chain goes around this. I'm not sure where that goes. I'm hearing some rattling that I'd love to get rid of. And you can reverse it with that yeah. motor. That's great. The reversing is awesome. That is... And dude. really what he's done is, with this system, is he's given it a, a, a pace, a cadence, the walking. Right. So all these extra gears here all help determine the relationship between the, those pieces. Well, and the lengths between these linkages, mm -hmm. right? So like this length to that length, it's giving this motion that's a curve. I'll wager, yeah, the mathematics of how that moves in the curve, right? Like the way the base of a strong beast walks yep. in a wing shape. It's yeah. like, it's really cool. All right. Awesome. Feels like a milestone. It's coming together. Okay. Adam, what are you doing with that Lego? Well, I'm hearing this little chatter in here, and it's because I got this nubbin of one of my uh, registration pins sticking out and rubbing against the gear on a little gear train. So rather than take it apart, I'm just cutting it off with a super thin razor saw in situ. There we go. Oh, wow. There you go. Hear the difference? Yes. Yeah, so let's get the rest of the stuff out of there. Oh, what's hilarious is that that piece actually stuck in the wheel on the other side. There we go. There, that's what I cut off. A big difference, a worthy difference. That is freaking cool. Making a face out of Lego. In your face, Sisyphus. to the rock, am I right? I think you're right, the boulder. And here's the interesting thing. I think the concern is that the boulder is a sphere. Right. And there's nothing more frustrating and challenging than designing a sphere with Lego. In fact, did you know that the master builders, one of their challenges they have to do in front of Lego to get certified as a master builder is build a sphere and then roll it. And here's the thing I'm about to tell you. Times five times f times five, times 12. Oh! Yeah, bring it, Norm! We're making some chunks. <laughs> Look at how few there are left. This is awesome. Ooh. I like working with Legos. Lego was my gateway drug to making. Seriously, I had Legos. My Legos were so old. How old were they? I still have Legos that my grandmother gave me from when Lego had a deal with Exxon, except Exxon wasn't Exxon at that point, it was Esso. So I have Legos with the Esso logo on them. Early 60s. Wow. Yeah. Oh, look at this, you put some stuff in the corners for me. I just couldn't wait. I, Adam, did I overstep my bounds <laughs> as the gatherer? <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. Uh, all Light right. assembly. We're so close. We are so close. This is really exciting. Um, so this, yes, like that. Oh, this is brilliant. Okay. And building the boulder as opposed, instead of filling it out, because the boulder itself needs to attach to the mechanism, it right. also moves and rolls up the hill. Um, it's just the two eight by eight uh, black pieces, plates, and then you have like a shell. That is really cool. 
There is, it's um, left over from when Mythbusters did a Lego episode. My producer Eric had a Lego ball on his desk for years. I would often open it up and hide things inside. And the episode where you guys rolled the ball, the, the Lego ball. Yeah, over a million Legos in that ball. And we have a lot of those pieces actually at our office. Oh, did you end up with them? We do. Oh, yep, we fabulous. Did. Yep. That's as it should be. Okay, so if this sits here like this, then this goes on there. Yes, look at this. It's a sphere out of Legos. It's, a, it's, a, it's amazing. I'm, I'm really quite impressed. That is very cool. Oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, it's time to put it in. Here we go. All right, so this sits like that. And it goes in. Okay, I see. There we go. Got it. That's it. Now you're seated. Okay, let's just see here. Oh, that's so pretty. Okay, so then this guy goes here, there. Oh, yeah. One and two. We're almost there. Three. I can't even tell you what an endorphin rush I'm having right now. Oh, look, now we put in the dude. Here we go. Oh, this is so cool. I can't even tell you. Here. Yep. All right, Adam, I think. We're almost done. It's the last four pieces. The signature. The signature. Awesome. Jason's okay. signature. Two, three, four. A great artist always signs their work. Actually, Mutt's mediocre artists do it too. But this man is a, a genuine artiste. This is a magnificent piece. That is it. That is the final piece. The reliefs are... Oh, 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 ah, ketchupa. All right, I want your hands facing in like that. Yeah, cool. And then you're gonna move it there. Oh, okay. So, let's take a look. This is Sisyphus pushing a stone forever. And we've got the reliefs on the side. Sisyphus and Chains. Parting a revelry. Yep. We've got Zeus throwing lightning bolts down. Ah. Zeus down. Zeus, Zeus is down. Uh, and then we've got the battle with horses here. Like, yeah, it's really, really cool. This is freaking fantastic. And of course, it is automata. It is automata. So it's mechanized. And you gotta turn it on. I do. I'm just making sure that all the little bits are connected the way they should be. And yeah, I think it's time for Sisyphus to push the stone uphill. Here we go. I remove the right hand side open. I'll push the button. Ah, oh, look at that. It is so. Elegant and mesmerizing. It's so human. I mean, that the amount that he's pushing, the fact that his gait slows down when the foot hits the ground, and the stone just barely moving. That is really, really lovely. It has so much character right there. And of course, he also designed it so you can hand crank it. Yes. He also designed it so you can hand crank it. Now, in order to hand crank it, well, so not only designed it to hand crank, but he designed it to be able to see the entire mechanism if one so desires. So you can open this whole thing up and take a look inside. Um, and I guess if one wants to hand crank it, you have to disconnect the motor, which actually just might be like, you literally just pop this out, but I'm a little nervous. Let's see here. Um, but the hand crank itself is actually stored, a piece inside. stored inside, plugs into here, and then you can then crank it. Um, That's beautiful. 
It is, yeah, it's a little tricky. Right. Oh, I see. Ah, if you want to hand crank it, all you got to do is move the gear over and then, yes. Okay, so we close it back up again. We put the hand crank here and then, there we go. That is a really lovely, lovely mechanism. Well done, Adam. Well done, Norm. Thank you for initiating me into the uh, tested Lego Builders group. <laughs> <laughs> that is just, I'm thrilled by that. That is a, uh, that's a one day build and my first Lego build to boot. That's right. And we'll have more on tested in the coming weeks. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.